Hey everybody, welcome back. Northern Lion. After this is the wrong save file, you fool. Afterbirth Plus. Booster pack, I was gonna call it a beauty pack. That's something completely different. I've been spending too much time at Sephora. D4DRTE99. I'm playing as the Bone Lord. P-A-R-T-Y, uh, because I want to? No, Gata. Gata's got nothing to do with it. In this case, I just like playing as the Bone Lord. We're getting so close to... Oh, that was bad. We're getting so close to our uh, merging. Not really of the save files, but of the Isaac videos on YouTube. Like, I wasn't joking. I had, like, almost a month-long backlog. And I tell you that, honestly... Even though I know some people are going to make fun of me. <laughs> it's in the interest of, you know, viewer awareness. You have the right to know, I suppose. People are like, sometimes, why is the backlog so long? And I'm like, well, unless something very relevant happens in relation to the song Kryptonite by Three Doors Down, the references in the video should be almost as current at the time of their publishing as they were at the time of the recording. I'm not starting up a video. How about that 2016 election, huh? <laughs> Can't wait to see where that one shakes out. Anyway, I digress. I'm doing a lot of digressing here early. We got Bomber Boy um, right off the bat. It's actually an item that, you know, if you got cojones, you can make it do some amazing work for you. Like, for example, okay, you're very lucky. And moreover, you made me look like an idiot. And I'm very capable of doing that myself, good sir. So you just rest your pretty little head. We're gonna get you home to Tyson in your cozy tiger bed. Is Pacifier really only one spirit heart? I thought it was more than- I thought it was three, but I must be thinking of PJs. Run is completely fine right now, but I did learn! You know what? I want to test it. Because people told me recently that if you lose a bow and a heart, it actually does cause you to lose your deal with the devil chance. But it might only be if you lose a bone heart, not if you lose a red heart that is currently like parented to a bone heart. So I'm not sure fully if that's the case. And I dare not test it, I suppose. You know, there's, there's two negative uh, circumstances. One of them would be that I was wrong. The other one would be that I'm right. How troubling. Oh, you gotta give me a, a second, like... I just got back, I was I was on a bike ride, and my brain is like all glycogen depleted, you know, I got, I'm, I pride myself on being so erudite, well spoken, well, we didn't obviously lose our deal with the devil chance there, so, it must only be if you lose the bone heart, um, obviously like, you know, high octane Isaac plays are another big part of my brand, very, very rarely making mistakes, in particular, in particular, I fully understand how to use pots in this game, which is something that a lot of people have been bringing up uh, quite regularly recently. They've been sending me messages like, Hey, talk about the pot play! And I'm like, well, I mean, if you want to diagnose what happened in the pot play, you can just see it on screen. You know, I, uh, I saw my moment, I took it, and I succeeded, and it was definitely the optimal way to approach that situation. I don't know why people are so attached to the idea of this, this pot play. It's like, you know, I could teach you, but I'd have to charge. So if you want to get a lesson in, in how to, you know, play with pots in this game, look no further, you know, you teach yourself. That's the first step. To thine own self be true and teaching. I'm considering doing a Udemy course for it as well. Or a Uterin course for it. I haven't decided yet what the, uh, what the best platform for the lessons would be. Gross. Um... So I, I didn't ruin our deal with the Devil Chance, I'm kind of surprised. We have a 46% chance. I don't know why 46 instead of 36. But, it's one of those things where like, I'm not gonna be too particular. You ever have like, uh, those kids in your class and I know you're gonna say NL is that kid, I'm not this kid, okay? First off, I'm an adult, stop calling me a kid. Those are fighting words. At this point in my life. Secondarily, I do see there's Black Handle, we're gonna go back. Probably put one here just to check. Wow. Um, he gets hung up on pedantic nonsense. I'm the kind of guy, I just want to go home. You know, I pick up, like, the gist of it. I'm good. I'm ready. Now, let's, you know, if you have a specific question that is likely to only be relevant to you, 
ask it at home. If you're asking, a, or ask it on Google, I should say. If you got a question, you you know, everyone in the class is looking around at each other, huh? What did this guy say? You know, then you ask the question. But if it's like, so if I um pop this value into the node REPL and then turn off the power button on my computer, what's the exact stack trace I'm gonna, and I'm, you know, God bless them, sometimes the professors, you know, they don't realize they're talking to a, oh, a weirdo and they, you know, they answer the question and then you, you realize that when you answer the question, you just get another question out of it. It's a whole to-do. Dude, a Satanic Bible? I don't want to sound indignant, but Satanic Bible, ooh, albeit great, is not what I'm looking for. Just check it. You got the you got the tools to check. Um, it's not what I'm looking for because I want something that helps me out with melee lord. And we are low on HP. Satanic Bible makes it very very easy for us to play as the uh, the soul. Not so easy for us to play as the bone lord, unfortunately. But it's still good, and uh, especially. When you end up picking up like more battery charges and stuff like that, you're never going to be disappointed to see Satanic Bible. I'm just saying in the realm, in the hierarchy of items I'm looking for, this is uh, not necessarily necessarily in the upper echelon. Not bad, though. Plus, I mean, dude, let's talk about the fact that we got Rune Bag with BFF. Justice. What does that mean for us? Uh, are you looking at it? It means Rune Bag is... 1.5 times larger than it normally is, which means the runes are 1.5 times better than they normally are. It's like you never even read the wiki for this game. I put it on the required readings list, and then you're showing up to class being like, you didn't teach me this, you know? Take a little personal responsibility. Oh, you haven't gone to uterine.com? <laughs> okay. Like I said, the jokes aren't going to be funny today, but that's okay. I had a, a very mundane situation uh, in my life this week, but that's, uh, you know, stretching mundane situations out into something a little bit more uh, ridiculous is kind of the bread and butter of the show, if you know what I mean, so let's go into it. Uh, I got back from class on Thursday, went to go for a bike ride, and uh, ooh, whoop. when I, uh, I went down, I never do this, I checked my tire. And my back tire was, like, basically deflated. It was just a nightmare. So this is on Saturday. I dropped my bike off at the bike shop because I'm a millennial with no skills. But really, at this point, I'm like, you know, I say it in the funny voice because it's true. <laughs> I got I to gotta go to a Udemy course and figure out how to, uh, you know, patch up a, a busted bike tire or something like that. But anyway, to this point, I was like, ah, you know what, I'll just get it fixed up and then... We'll be good to go. So I dropped it off, and this is on Thursday. They're like, it's a long weekend. It'll be ready on Tuesday, but we'll call you. Sunday rolls around. No call. Monday, long weekend. Don't expect a call. Tuesday, expecting a call. No call. It was also my anniversary, though. So I was like, I'm not going to be, you know, too particular about it. Um, we're going to do it like this. Yes. I mean, we could take Book of Sin, but that would be highly, highly idiotic. Um, well, now it wouldn't be, but... So Wednesday rolls around, no call comes in, and I'm starting to get a little cheesed off. Thursday, why didn't I go on Wednesday? Well, you know, on Tuesday we might have gotten a little turnt. It was the anniversary, so, you know, I spent Wednesday working and knocking out some of the stuff I should have done on Tuesday, but didn't do because of the whole anniversary thing, which was a lot of fun, but we, you know, maybe we'll talk about that later in today's episode. Um, so Thursday is like the first day I got time, walk over to the bike shop, I go, hey, I dropped my bike off on uh, Thursday, I was just checking to see if it's ready. Dude looks at me dead in the windows of my soul and goes, <laughs> probably. So, <laughs> like, oh, I didn't realize. Look, I'm more than anybody else understand the the hesitancy to use the telephone. I don't like it. I've talked about it on many occasions. Um, when I see that I have a voicemail message, I it, it triggers a, like a minimum level flight or fight response inside of me. And then inevitably it just ends up being a, a scam call in Mandarin these days. I don't know whether those are going around like all of Canada like crazy right now, but I, again, I'm digressing. But I mean, if you're running a place of business and you say you gotta, you're gonna call somebody. 
you gotta give them a call. Otherwise, I'm just expecting, you know, something's gone terribly wrong. They're like, sorry, sir. We tried everything we could, but we couldn't save it. And we didn't want to call you because that would be an awkward conversation. Moreover, then I was like, you know, they're like, it'll be you know, whatever dollars. And I was like, okay, on credit, please. And they gave me the credit card machine and it gave me a little tip indicator. And I was like, eh, I don't know what the methodology is here. If you're watching this and you're in Europe, we ever talk about tipping in North America. It's a great con uh, opportunity for you to get very, very um, self-inflating. I understand, you know, tipping culture, uh, it being mandatory, is very foreign to a lot of people. And believe you me, it, it, after getting a lot of service uh, in parts of the world, it's foreign to me as well. But it's just the cost of doing business here, you know? Um... So I was like, oh, no siree, Bob, you're not going to get me with this one. I only gave him a 5% tip. <laughs> I don't, in my defense, I don't know what the suggested... Uh, oh, let's do it. What do we got going on here? Uh, it's interesting, I suppose. I don't know what you're supposed to tip your, your bicycle repair person. You know, if I went to a car dealership... And uh, I was like, hey, my car is broken, and I bought it from the dealership, and then they fixed it, and then they're like, well, it's customary to give a tip. I'd be like, here's a tip. You should have sold me the extended warranty, because this thing's a piece of garbage. <laughs> Maybe that's a little needlessly aggressive of me. Do I, I have actual holy mantle. I don't have a wooden cross anymore. I have the real holy mantle. Please stand up. It's actually like a, a pretty useful reroll, considering the state that we were in. But yeah, I don't know, dude. Tipping's weird here. That being said, there was a um, I saw it because it was also posted on my subreddit, and I don't say that to be you know self-inflating. The subreddit is our northern line, and it was like, does NL have to deal with this? And it was a parking meter in Vancouver, like where you'd pay to park, and there was a tip indicator on it. But that was made by a satirical website. Okay, we don't tip for parking in Vancouver. We might as well, because, you know, parking can be like 4 to $11 an hour, depending on where you park, but we don't tip, okay? We pretend that it's paying for a service. And that's the bottom line. What do we got here? Decent. So that's my mundane story. I just think they should have called. Now, could I have called? Absolutely. It's, it's a very, it was like a standoff of millennials. It was, they didn't want to call me, I didn't want to call them. It was a whole like, ooh, 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 wow, wow, wow. And uh, honestly, I guess they won because I came in. So, just goes to show you. Grab this. Again, I want to point out because occasionally people take this the wrong way. I don't, I don't hate millennials. I am a millennial. I'm allowed to roast us. You know, when a 60-year-old person who, you know, doesn't realize how much they've benefited from the fact that, you know, they lived in one of the world's most functional economies during the years when every other country on Earth was devastated by the effects of endless war, and they go, oh, millennials can't even work at a gas station and buy a house anymore, those lazy bums. You know, then you can be like, hey, Grandpa, shut up. <laughs> You're being ignorant. I'm not telling you to shut up because I disrespect you, Grandpa. You fired the first shot. You ever see Rambo? It's about your generation. You should watch it sometime. It might give you some insight. Actually, we're better off with this. But as a millennial, and as a millennial who embodies some of the traits, thank you, uh, that baby boomers think that millennials have, I can make the joke. It's also very nice because I'm uh, a millennial who basically, through incredible luck has done all right for myself so i love uh occasionally like i'll be having conversations with my parents or my parents friends and then i'll roast millennials and they'll go like yeah you get it and i'm like yeah but at the same time like it's really your fault i mean it's really everybody so i'm not trying to turn this into a political generation warfare thing but as many people have pointed out we as millennials, the number one thing that uh, older people like to insult us about is the fact that we're the generation that got participation trophies. And, of course, it's the stupidest argument you could conceivably ever make, because I don't recall... First off, I didn't even want to play baseball. 
I was forced to play baseball, but I digress. It was probably for the best to have done it. You know, I learned a little bit about what it means to be on a team. I got some exercise, made some friends, etc., etc. I'm not mad about that. But I don't remember being nine years old, going down to the trophy store and being like, Hey, I need 30 trophies that say third division runner-up, a.k.a. sixth place in a six-team league. <laughs> if I remember correctly, I was like, Another summer playing baseball? Nah. I don't believe that they're selling the bulk of those trophies to nine-year-olds. I believe they're selling the bulk of the, or, you know, back in the day, they're selling the bulk of those trophies to, you know, 29 to 40-year-olds who had nine-year-old kids and then didn't want their kids to be sad. Honey, you're not the, you're not on the worst team in the league. You came second in the third division. Look at that, you got second place, despite the fact that you lost every game of the season. By the way, this was my team. <laughs> Basically every year, we found ourselves in the uh, C Division runner-up category, which is just a very polite way to say last. So I, I know it more than most. I was like, can you do that? You can just... You can be the source of the thing that you then make fun of? Am I starting to realize what it means to be an adult? Because it's freaking sweet. For now, at least. I'm enjoying it. I also... it. I don't know if my parents are, like, uh, anti-millennial. They're pretty young. They're in their, like, um, early 50s. Which, to, to have a 30-year-old child makes them on the younger side, for sure. 30... I told you, don't call me a child. 30-year-old... Man who makes his own decisions and pays his own income tax, okay? Um, small rock, please. But if they are, I think I gotta remind my mom that, you know, any sentimentality that I have, any overt sensitivity, anytime I'm a baby and I'm like, I don't want to kill an insect, because that insect might have a family, that comes from her. You know, I, I grew up in the generation of, like, uh... You can be whatever you want to be. If you want to raise your kids like Spartans, I mean, by all means, <laughs> I don't really support it. If you want to, you know, go straight back to, like, the origin story of 300 or something like that. The first 15 minutes of that movie where they're throwing babies off cliffs because they can't bench press 200 pounds like little Tarzan on TLC. Go ahead, but you, what you can't do is uh, raise them like we're Bubble Boy and then... Uh, 20 years later, be like, why are you so sensitive? <laughs> Where... What is happening here? Do we have broken stopwatch? Ah! Let's go. So that's, you know, recognize millennials. If a generational war ever happens, I'm on your side, okay? So don't come knocking around my door. I'll fight alongside the millennials. That doesn't mean we can't make fun of ourselves as well, though, okay? Because what are we, if not the funniest generation? Hopefully. We grew up with, like, Golden Age Simpsons. And I digress. I just gotta throw another digression in there. How's this run? It's gotten... Did you see that spider? It's freaking me out. We must have chaos, too, right? Bomb Egg is not a normal boss drop. This run is good, and, you know, it's kind of boring to say, like, every Forgotten run is good. You think it's called the Forgotten because of Isaac lore? Or you think it's called the Forgotten because it was, like, uh, a character that they planned to put in the game a long time ago, and then they're like, ah, it just doesn't work right now. We're out. See you later, dude. I have, like, designs It could happen both ways, you know? You never know. Curse of the Labyrinth again. It's like they know I have an NLSS starting relatively soon, and I would love to take a shower before it. That being said, my defense against the idea that I'm rushing through this run is... I'm gonna go fight Hush. We have a Chaos card. We have not a lot of keys, but a lot of money. So we can actually improve ourselves pretty nicely as... Uh, on the hush fight, we have a hundred percent chance for a deal with the devil. I guess, yeah. If you don't get in, and this is like these, you get into the AP level Isaac math questions here. 
if you don't get a deal with the devil on an XL floor, you have a 100% chance of getting a deal with the devil on the next floor, ignoring the penalty for taking red heart damage and so on. Even if you had like a 33% chance to get a deal with the devil on the XL floor, you go up to 100. Because you miss two deals with the devil in the game's parlance. I believe. Okay, that's extremely great. Homing scatter bombs. No, 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 no. It's the wrong... It's the wrong way to go. One more? One more. Easy money. We should be using bombs a lot more regularly. Now, we do have bomb bag, actually. I was just going to say we don't have that that many, but with bomb bag, we're pretty much good to go here. I really don't like that these flies shoot me when they have nothing else to shoot. Because, like, when it says... Poke Go, you know, I think of Pokemon, obviously. I'm not sure if everybody else made that connection. It's pretty difficult. Um, and when I think of Pokemon, I think of friends. And my friends don't shoot at me when I've made, uh, when I'm the only person in the room, you know? We unite against our, uh, our foes, of course. Gratata. But, uh, when we're in the room together, we're just hanging. Me and the homies. Now. Thank you for uh, indulging me with that aside. Yes, I have listened to hip-hop music recently. Why do you ask? I love it. Ooh! I don't know why I'm so excited about a card. I already have, like, maybe the best card in the game. It depends. You know, we're living in, like, a post-scarcity world in Isaac, right? Like... Is Chaos the best card in the game, when you could also probably kill Hush easily? Is anything good? Wow, that's, I, I got way too philosophical for myself. Is anything good? <laughs> if your run is great, is anything good? It's like the classic problem of like, you know, what is Grimes by Elon Musk? For Christmas or his birthday, you know, what do you get the man who has everything? Mm, sledgehammer so we can break the kneecaps of people trying to form a union in his factories? Look, okay, I told you I wasn't going to get political over the course of this. Moreover, Elon Musk, half Canadian, went to my university for a year before leaving because there weren't enough ladies there. His words, not mine. So, I, I legally speaking, I can't slander him like that. Plus, I have great sympathy for him because he's getting owned on Twitter, like, all the time these days. And, you know, from one person getting owned to another, it's hard, dude. Once again, we're being attacked for presenting new ideas. Please, just let me go. I've clearly demonstrated I will destroy the remainder of this floor. You cannot stop me. I do not want butter. It's a bad trinket. It has no reason to exist. What? <laughs> that didn't find... Oh, it probably homed in when I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Excuse me. I do not want key beggar. I picked it up because it was in my line. But I do not desire it. Let me go. The only thing, like, if we're going to talk Isaac for a bit, which, you know, the run's coming pretty close to its, uh, its end, I think. But, uh... 99 Bombs is actually gorgeous, and I, I thank you so much for that opportunity. However, I would love to see an incredible deal with the devil here that gives us, like, guppy potential. Apart from that, there's not that much, I mean, very, very little could sink us, but ooh, very, very little can have, like, a... too much of a positive impact, you know? We're, we're kind of in the incremental change zone. We got 99 incredible sad bombs so i screwed up the deal with the devil by trying to dodge a single shot i feel very smart right now you don't even have to ask let's go check on the skype group here see how docket is planning sure works for me um what else maybe some golden eye and a third banger 
This is how docket preparation happens on a regular basis. I will take 10 bombs, even though we probably have more than enough. Uh, you know what? Let's get dangerous and take uh, sad bombs. I don't really care about uh, Mega at this point. Or um, Mama Mega. Here we go again. Take some HP, of course. I could take Remote Detonator. And I, I understand people would probably want to see it. Uh, I mean, that's pretty much full stop. Like, if we wanted to have some hilarity on this run, we could just throw some bombs in here at, like, different areas. And then blow them all up. Not quite as much damage as I was expecting. But certainly, like, very, very not bad. Hey, uh, get over here, please. I got a hit. Okay. Smack him with the Chaos card. He's done. Easy money. We don't even need to blow that up. I keep forgetting that I have Remote Detonator, which is the whole reason I, like, wanted to not take it in the first place, but so be it. Dude, I keep running over my headphone cord. Get I don't want to... I'm trying to take better care of my... of my stuff. I'm going through a real, uh... I want to be like a renaissance man sort of phase, to be honest with you. I was thinking about it the other day. And I was like, I need to take the car in for an oil change. Last time I took the... I, I thought that the trade-off was that if you take your car in for an oil change, somebody else does it for you, they do it right 100%. Uh, they've done, you know, 10,000 of them. And it's more convenient. But the last time I took my car in for an oil change, you know, I dropped it off and they're like, okay, we'll have it done for you in like, you know, two hours. And I was like, that's not really that convenient. So I was thinking, like, instead of taking two hours, and I mean, admittedly, I'd go home and probably like do a video in that meantime, but I was like, why don't I just like look up a tutorial for how to change my oil online, go to Canadian Tire, buy the necessary parts, you know, I'm not saying I'm going to fix my brakes. <laughs> but for truly basic stuff, I'm I'm getting very, like, you know, teach a man to fish about it, I think. It's just skills I'd like to have. You know, like, I don't know how to change a tire. And every one... On a, on a car, I should say. And it, it freaks me out when I think about it. Now, most of the time, I don't think about it. But I actually, like... I, I live most of my life... Just, if I drive, and my tire pops, I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna, like, pull over, and I, to be honest, I'm just being 100% and 100% millennial. I'm probably gonna call my dad and be like, hey, so we're not, like, in danger or anything. Like, I'm not gonna be in tears, but our, uh, our tire pops on the highway. It's something I've never dealt with before. What the heck do we do? They're gonna be like, call your insurance. And I'm gonna be like, ah, can we email them? <laughs> They have like a 24-hour instant response email address that isn't a telephone line. So I'm like, nah, you know. I think what it honestly has been is that I've been watching this Doomsday Prepper show. And uh, I'm like, these people are crazy. They're actually out of their minds. But then I realized, um, and believe you me, if anybody watching this is out there, don't take this as an admonishment of your lifestyle if you're a Doomsday Prepper, okay? I feel like it's probably a good idea to have a certain amount of food and water on hand in case some kind of local or regional or even global catastrophe hits. Where I start to take an issue, and if you want to take this as being political, as far as I'm concerned, that's your problem and not mine. I think you should have more water than guns. And it's really up to you if you want to follow that advice. I haven't written very much about it on the prepper forums. I'm not on the news list. I opted out thanks to GDPR, but it's up to you. If you, you know, you choose. Wait, basically, if if a prep happens, you could just shoot me and take my water if you want. But I think I would die feeling like I was in the right, and you're being kind of a jerk. Um, anyway, regardless, I digress. Because I mean, we have a bug out bag, but it's not in case like you know China calls back the American national debt. It's in case of like you know an earthquake. And it's not, you know, there's no guns in it. There's like, you know, medicine and a couple cans of tuna. But anyway, again, 
I digress. But I was watching this show, and I was like, these people are out of their minds. But they're like actually admirably out of their minds a little bit. Again, teaching your six-year-old to use an AK-47 might be a little bit overkill, in, in my worldview at least. Um, and in, in order to back up that, I'm just going to cite the evidence of the guy in episode, like, three who shoots his own thumb off. But, again, I'm not really getting into that issue here today. Um, but these people are, like, they've made their own Faraday cages. They got huge gardens. They built an underground bunker. And I'm like, that is actually, in the weirdest way, and I'm very begrudging to admit it, I'm incredibly impressed, because like, you've learned some incredible skills. Now, I think you've learned them for a lot of the reasons that I would consider to be silly, but hey, you know, you learned them. And I think it's actually, in its own weird way, it motivated me to at least learn, like... And not four situations where, like... You know, the an EMP goes off in low Earth atmosphere and blows out all our electrons. There's a lot of, like... I, the motivation for almost every single Doomsday Prepper, really when you distill it down, if it's not a volcano, it's oftentimes like, we used to be the greatest country on Earth and I'm not sure if we still are and that scares me. And I understand that kind of anxiety for sure, you know? I just, uh, you know, for me it's more about like, I don't want to have to wait two hours for my oil to be changed if I could spend 55 minutes and do it myself. I'm not really worried about saving the money, but, you know, there is also that. Plus, the area that we live in in Vancouver, you know, very quickly becoming extremely gentrified. Which I gotta point out, this might be a controversial statement, but I'm really for it. Because I like hipster coffee and good beer. Riding my bike around and, you know, reclaimed landscapes. However, um... You know, the oil chain shops, every time we look at it, it's like, this is getting a little further away. Or like, it used to be one right down the street, and now it's six blocks away, and they're going out of business. And, you know, next year, we're going to have to drive, uh, you know, an hour and a half each way just to, just to buy gas. Please let me out of this floor. I know I don't have to use... Bone Lord, but don't I? Cause he's the coolest. <laughs> I would say that I do have to use the Bone Lord. That's just me personally though. Alright, two luck. I was gonna get mad, but now that I see we only have two luck, I'm like, you know what? This is a fair amount of items to be receiving. And we're gonna win easily and come back. I don't know, maybe do an Eden run next time mix it up a little bit I'm just I'm kind of in a holding pattern some hopefully very commentary focused episodes until uh, at least the the files merge I don't know what I'm gonna do because like the second save file I don't want to spoil it but it may or may not have like a little bit of a nice number attached to wins in a row but I have to unlock the forgotten on that save file that's going to put a real damper on that. Probably. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do. I don't know. We could continue doing... I guess we would still have the booster pack items. Even if we did our Eden runs on the other save file. But then it seems like kind of an arbitrary delineation, right? Like we got one save file that's like, this is Zane. And the other one is like, I'm just trying to win. And I don't know. That's not really like the kind of... Uh, environment I'm trying to create in uh, in my Isaac videos. You know, I want you to go into every episode thinking that anything could happen. And if you think that there hasn't been Zane on the other save file, I had 20 wins in a row and I accidentally chose the lost. That's all you need to know about that. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did click the like button, it helps a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. And now, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.